These are practice exercises from page 85 and 89 of the textbook dealing with calculations of formula weights and molar masses or molecular weights. So first, just to go over the difference between the two things, a formula weight is typically abbreviated as FW, and that is in units of atomic mass units, or AMU. A molar mass or molecular weight is very similar, but it is going to be in units of grams per mole. For both of these, we're going to be using the periodic table in order to figure out what these masses are, either in atomic mass units or in grams per mole. And if you look at the periodic table provided in your textbook, it goes out to a lot of decimal places for some of these elements. Your textbook mentions, and we're going to use this method, we're only going to go to one def decimal place, so the tenths place when we do these calculations, just to keep everything a little bit neater. Okay, so let's look at the first one. We are calculating the formula weight of aluminum hydroxide. In order to do this, we need to understand which elements are present. So we have one aluminum. We have three oxygens, and we have three hydrogen atoms. And I can tell that because that subscript three with the parentheses, that distributes to both the oxygens and the hydrogens and the hydroxide. So now what I need to do is I need to use my periodic table to figure out what these masses are so I can add them together. So taking a look on the periodic table, I'm gonna need the mass of aluminum, of oxygen, and of hydrogen. And again, remember that we will be rounding these to one decimal place. So we're going to use aluminum as 27.0 atomic mass units, oxygen as 16.0 atomic mass units, and hydrogen as 1.0 atomic mass units. So looking back up at our calculation, When we write this out, we are going to say that the formula weight is equal to the mass of one aluminum, so 27.0 atomic mass units, plus three oxygens, so 16.0 atomic mass units, and three hydrogen at one atomic mass unit. So thinking about our significant figure rules, this means that our final answer needs to be rounded to one decimal place because that's when we do the addition, the furthest decimal place we go to. So, so the answer is going to be 78.0 atomic mass units. That is the formula weight for aluminum hydroxide. I'm going to do something similar with the next one. Again, using the periodic table, and this time I'm going to be using carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and carbon we are going to round to 12.0 atomic mass units. So doing the math up here, if you look, we've got one carbon atom, we have four hydrogen atoms, and one oxygen. So this formula weight is going to be equal to 12.0 atomic mass units for the carbon, plus 4 times 1.0 atomic mass units for the hydrogen, plus 16.0 atomic mass units for the oxygen. Again, rounding to one decimal place gives us 32.0 atomic mass units. Now when we do the next one, notice that this is worded a little bit differently. Now we are calculating molar mass, or molecular weight, and it's very similar. We're still using the periodic table to find this information. We're just going to change our units from atomic mass units into grams per mole. It's the exact same numerical value, just a different unit, because now instead of thinking about a single atom of that element, we're thinking about a full mole. Remember that a full mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, so Avogadro's number of atoms, which is a lot of atoms, and that's why we actually have a mass in grams, something that we could measure. So again, looking for this one, I'm going to need calcium. I'm going to need nitrogen, 
and I'm going to need oxygen. Again, it's a good idea to think about how many of each atom you have. There's one atom of calcium in here, two nitrogens, and six oxygens. So when we calculate the molecular weight or the molar mass, it's going to be the mass of the calcium, which again, rounded, is 40.1 grams per mole. Adding that to the two nitrogens, which are each 14.0 grams per mole, and adding that to the six oxygens, which are each 16.0 grams per mole. Same significant figure rules apply. We're going to go to one decimal place with our addition, so we'll be looking at a final answer of 164.1 grams per mole. So that is the molar mass or molecular weight of calcium nitrate. And we'll find that these numbers are very helpful when we do stoichiometric conversions because this unit, grams per mole, allows us to convert between grams and mole, something we'll be doing a lot of in the future.